With the popularity of Eternal Champions, it was only a matter of time before a spinoff was made. First on the list is a Game Gear title starring the Catburger Larson Tyler. Around 1995, Chicago Syndicate plummeted onto the system. The story is pretty much this. Larson Tyler won the tournament, and now he's sent to the moment before he died, and he saves the police chief. Now he must rid the city of the mob boss that screwed over Larson, and he has to take out the flunkies too. He also has one year to do this, or he goes to jail. Larson looks like he just stepped off the pages of a Dick Tracy comic. Hell, even the police chief looks a little like Flattop. The in-game graphics are nice, but since you're beating up the same two enemy sprites, that's not exactly a ringing endorsement. The music comes in in high-pitched garbles that are in some miraculous way able to increase the shrilling of this game to that of a bat. If you let the game sit for a while, you'll get the story along with a horribly butchered version of the Eternal Champions theme. It's not the only butchered song in this game. You also get terrible renditions of classics such as carnival music. Irish drinking song, Oriental music, and many, many more. is like a typical BMO. You walk from left to right, challenging college students and female pirates. Every button combination imaginable is used to pull off an attack, except just pressing a single fucking button. I think this is the only game that has a start button as an actual action button. Yes, I said the start button. That means you can't even pause the game. You have to use a combination of a directional button and either A or B to do anything. Up is used to jump, which is inconsistent at best. Ugh, missing an enemy. Gotta go back and get him. What the hell? I can't turn around. Who the fuck programmed this game? No, the player wouldn't want to turn around. So now I have to do this back step, and I have to back this the bastard. Wait, this looks really familiar. Not only can you not turn around, but you only have one attack that can save your ass from this shit. Oh, you do have secondary weapons like a machine gun, a bow, or butterfly knives, but they're all just plain bloody useless. I still haven't figured out how to actually get to any of the bosses, so I'm just stuck at the end of this day, constantly fighting spawning enemies until I die. Well, now I'm dead, time to start the stage over again. What? I only have one life? You mean to tell me that I have to go to each of the eight stages with broken controls, useless secondary weapons, and find out how to get to the bosses and do this all in one life? I also have one year to do this in which every day passes in a matter of seconds. Approximately one year later, most likely less, another spinoff was brought to the Genesis. Let's go take a look at that one, shall we? In another alternate timeline, usually considered canon, Shadow wins the tournament and forms an anti-corruption group meant to take down the Black Orchid group as a way to avenge their attempt on Shadow's life. Shadow retains her appearance from the Sega CD version, hence why many consider this canon. This game uses pre-rendered 3D graphics for Shadow, Twildee, and Twildum. Yes, they have names, but I don't really care. It's also used for all the enemies in this game. While they look nice, they move like lumbering mounds of clay. Most of the game's memory was dedicated to doing these enhanced graphics. Well, guess what parts of the games had to suffer to make this shit work? As I said, you control Shadow and two other uninspired movie cliche knockoffs you really don't care about and you infiltrate some building. You switch control between each of the characters and everything happens in real time. Now this is a pretty cool idea and would have worked if the rest of the game wasn't so damn broken. 
The missions are time based and with the ungodly slow speed of each of the agents, you're more likely never to finish a mission. You would think the characters would be smart enough to be able to defend themselves if they were attacked. Nope. So you have to constantly babysit these pea brain troglodytes while trying to complete missions. Controlling these plastic models that pass for characters is just as annoying at the same time bland as hell. You do have a number of moves that you can use, but since the enemies are as smart as garbage bins, you don't really need them. Also, in some of the missions, you have to work on control panels. Luckily, you don't have to keep pressing buttons when they start to work on them. Oh, but wait, you still have to keep an eye out for enemies that show up because your soldiers have the combat ability of a kindergarten classroom. This used the same graphics technique that Donkey Kong Country used two years ago, but unlike that game, Everything else went to shit. The music is bland, the sound effects are annoying, the voice samples are over the top, the gameplay eats ass with the side chips. There is only one good thing about this game. Nice fucking models!